Well, earlier this week, we covered the warning from the head of MI5 that the Israel-Hamas war meant there was a greater risk of Islamist terror attacks in the UK. And now our leading counter-terrorism official wants the government to stop radical Muslim clerics from entering the UK if they call for people to be beheaded if they commit blasphemy. I mean, I think that's probably fair enough, don't you? Robin Simcock cited the case of N.I. Tullah Abbasi, who is from Bangladesh, he was on a recent visit to the UK and he said that critics of the Prophet Muhammad should have their heads chopped off. He said that people behind the 9-11 attacks were brave lions. Now, actually, it was partly only because of our very own Charlie Peters, who we've currently dispatched to Tel Aviv, who exposed the fact that this guy was in the country. But not just that, that there were people in places like Leicester, for example, and Birmingham and parts of London as well, who were queuing up to buy tickets to go and see this guy talk. And that arguably, I think, is the more concerning thing. It's one thing, you know, lunatics like that being allowed into the country, but it's another thing, having a ready-made group of people, an audience of people who are desperate to hang on every word that they say. With me now is Reem Ibrahim, who's Director of Communications at the IA. Reem, thank you very, very much. Look, you know, all for freedom of speech and everything, but maybe not if it means beheading people for slating the Prophet Muhammad. Surely these people need to be uh, kept out of this country, do you think? I actually disagree, Patrick. I do wow. think that if we believe in the unequivocal uh, right to freedom of expression and we believe that individuals should be free to uh, to freely express themselves and say those things, I would like to see people like Abbasi who are saying these awful, awful things, I would like to ensure that it's at the surface. Because otherwise, if we get into the business of banning these individuals from coming to this country, if we start banning people like Abbasi from entering this country and being able to speak that this this kind of conversation would but you know the thing is you're never you're never going to change these people's minds room this is the thing it's not like a normal debate this isn't like a student debate or something this is like radical islamist extremism right where they believe that they're serving a higher power and that nothing anybody says you can't engage them in a debate and you know our old mate abassi there is not going to change his mind is he so what's the point Abbasi himself won't change his mind, but as you said, there are thousands of people that are attending his talks. And ultimately, what's going to happen is if we were to ban these individuals from coming to this country at all, then he would still be doing those talks and these kind of conversations would still be occurring, but they would be occurring underground without any challenge. And I think that fundamentally, this is really where we talk about the right to freedom of expression, but also I want to ensure that I know exactly where those individuals are. And I think the Met Police would probably appreciate that as well if there are these thousands of people that are attending his mm. talks listening to him say awful things like anybody that criticizes the prophet muhammad should be beheaded these are horrendous things to be said mm. but if we if they were to be said underground they would go unchallenged and that's my concern okay but we have a massive problem with radicalization don't we i mean prisons for example are like jihadi training grounds at the moment we've got radical hate preachers left right and center why would you want to increase that well, just surely, surely just, just, just nip it in the bud. Just say, you know what? Go and stay in Bangladesh. We've already got enough of it over here. Unfortunately, they wouldn't nip it in the bud and we would still see these kind of conversations occurring underground. And that's kind of my main point here. Mm. I would like to ensure, especially young people that are incredibly impressionable. There are many, many young people in this country that would uh, see these kind of conversations about you know, their calling to God and they would listen to people like Abbasi and genuinely believe it. I think it's very important that we're then able to look at that and point out how horrendous these kind of conversations are. If it's being being banned altogether, if this kind of expression or freedom of expression is being banned altogether, then obviously these kind of conversations are going to occur underground. And I, I fear that if that was the case, there would be even more people that would be convinced by these ideas and be, remain completely unchallenged. So someone for you that thinks that 9-11 was a good thing, that's all right like to, to hear, to listen to. It's absolutely not all right, uh, not all right thing to say, but it shouldn't be made illegal. I think that, and this is kind of really what angers me by uh, about a lot of people that are, are on the right that generally say we believe in freedom of expression, and yet, you know, looking at the protests over the weekend, the number of people that are usually on the free speech brigade that usually say that actually freedom of expression is fundamentally important are now calling for these protests. Yeah, I'm not going to. The thing is, the thing is, though, I'm not going to go into. I'm not going to go into bat for people's right to say things when those people are 
the most intolerant people in society. So there's a difference between like freedom fighters, you know, who, who, who believe in, you know, civil liberties and stuff like that. But why should I defend the civil liberties of the kind of person who, let's be honest, Reem, if you were close to him, you wouldn't be able to walk around looking like that, would you? you? You'd have the full face covering on. You probably wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be, you might not even be, you might not even be able to have a job. You know, I'd have been beheaded well, by now. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into bat for, you know, hate clerics like that. I might go into bat for someone, you know, who wanted to fight against lockdown or something, but there's a difference, surely, between those people, the free speech brigade and this lot. So, Patrick, what I will say is that I think that we should be arguing for these causes and arguing for individual liberty for everyone. Because ultimately, and I'd like to quote um, Oscar Wilde here. Okay. Oscar Wilde said, um, I will defend to the death your right to make an ass of yourself. And I think that fundamentally, it is about allowing other people to argue for these things so that we can then say this is absolutely wrong. And I think that you're absolutely right. There is a huge difference between these incredibly oppressive individuals that would not bat an eyelid and would absolutely take away my right to dress the way I do yeah. or make me cover my hair. But I think that if we're going to be fair about this, we have to be principled across the board. OK, I mean, it's interesting. I, I, would, I would love to see Oscar Wilde's take on, you know, radical Islamist extremism, uh, of course. My, my, my concern is just is whether or not whether or not this would spread even more by virtue of having them there hailed as some kind of jihadi rock star coming to the UK with, with a crown. I, I get what you mean about this idea of not wanting to necessarily ban things, but I suppose it's a question of where is that line? What is it that you ban? But Reem, we'll have to continue this conversation another time. Thank you very, very much. Reem Ibrahim there, communications officer at the IEA, uh, which, it, interestingly, so it's the Institute for Economic Affairs, of course, does rather unfortunately, especially given the subject matter, although, of course, it bears no resemblance to what uh, Reem actually thinks or believes, does share the same three-letter acronym as uh, the uh, Islamic Emirates of Afghanistan. But there we go.